Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video, I'm gonna kinda try not to leave some of you hanging from yesterday. I showed you that super rare book. Um, and what I didn't wanna do is not be able to show you the programming if you missed it and, and you know what the <coughs> and what the robot would look like when it does each program and I also want to show you what my students do or what I give my students every time they hit one of those checkpoints so if you want to see that stay with me Before we get to the video, I just wanted to show you my new bookshelf. So I, I'm i a huge Toy Story fan, if you guys don't know. So this year when McDonald's gave away the uh, toys, I had to get all of them. And what's, whoa, sorry. And what's really cool is all of the toys made up the RV that was in the movie. Pretty awesome. Uh, there's me and my buddy Brian. We coached. Uh, championship boys basketball team several years ago there's me and my family we went to the friends um, filming place what you call that um, you know the Central Perk backdrop that was kind of cool and there's us we went to the Grand Tetons in Yellowstone this summer and there is the infamous name badge from the Wheel of Fortune show did you guys get a chance to see that all right, so let's get to the video. So today's video, I'm gonna take the booklet from yesterday, take a robot that's already been built, and go through each of those programming pages, show you what the robot will look like when it completes them, and then I'll show you what my students receive, just so that I know and they know that they've hit those checkpoints and that their programming was perfect. So let's go to the booklet and the robot. Okay, so the booklet has my students uh, making this educator bot. And then after each stage of their building, they'll have them stop and just do a programming checkpoint. So here they just completed the driving base. And then they have them just, um, you know, doing the demo on the robot. The only program that you cannot uh, delete off this brick. So demo would be um, in brick program, say, whoops, went to the wrong one. Wow, really? Sorry, everybody having an issue getting to the brick program save. There it is. And then they just have to do the demo. So it's just the eyeballs come on. Let's do a turn. Whoa. And so that's, that's what they get the checkpoint for, just being able to access the demo. Now let's go to page 40. All right, so on page 40, look how complicated they made uh, doing a two second spin look like. Now here, I, I understand, they're just trying to get the students used to navigating to get the brick program. But yeah, my students get overwhelmed by, whoa. So on this two second spin, um, it's just gonna be this move tank that we change to the spin and then we just put that on for the two seconds. So for their page 40 checkpoint, it's just going to be that two second spin. Let's move on. Okay, for page 47, they had them put their ultrasonic sensor on their robot. So on this one here, they're just having the robot go forward. You could see something 30 centimeters away. They're asking the robot to stop. So we can actually just go through the spin that we just did and just modify that. So there's the forward. We'll go and make this the 30 centimeters. Whoops, what am I doing? And we're just going to make this the stop. So have my trusty box here. So if we start this, it'll just stop 30 centimeters away. And I always encourage my students to mess with the distance, you know, just having them get used to, whoa, 
I had a hard time seeing the box. Just getting used to uh, changing things up, you know, feeling that they can, they have options to, you know, change that to whatever they want. So there was the ultrasonic sensor checkpoint. Let's move on. Okay, so here's the gyro sensor checkpoint now. So if you can, you know, just understand what the book's doing, you know, they did the driving base, put on the gyro, uh, I'm sorry, the ultrasonic sensor. They had them attach the gyro sensor. So the amount of pages in between the checkpoints just vary depending on how easy it is to attach whatever sensor they're putting on next. So next is going to be the gyro sensor. They're having the robot go forward for one second. We have this uh, right spin. Then the gyro sensor kicks in with a 45 degree turn and then another forward for that one second. So we can actually still modify this existing program. So there is, there's gonna be our one second uh, forward. And then we have this spin. So let's just change it to make sure I get the right one in here. Oops, there it is. Then we're gonna do the gyro sensor. Right there, we don't, got, we don't have to touch that because that is the 45 degrees. And then we're just gonna do this forward for the one second. So let's go ahead and put this on the floor and see how this guy is gonna go. And there's their gyro sensor checkpoint for that program. Let's move on. Okay, for the next page or checkpoint, they have built their medium motor and attached that onto their robot. So this program has their medium motor dropping down for one second and then just backing up for that one second. So they initially had us making the cube. I told my students, eh, don't bother. We'll, we'll figure out something to trap and pull back. So let's just go ahead and do this real quick. So we're gonna do that medium motor first and we're gonna drop that down. And they want us to do that for one second. And then they want um, this backwards for one second. Okay, so let's watch this in action. We kinda move stuff out of the way here, so here we go. So the gate drops and it just backs up for that one second and they're they're pretty amazed they you know they haven't encountered this medium motor before now so they're they're pretty hyped on that working let's keep going okay for the color sensor here we go this one's pretty easy they're having the robot go forward if it sees less than 50 percent reflection they want their robot to stop so I have to go over with my students. It's not about black. It's just about reflection because they just see black and they just assume that it's about color when when they program, it's not about color. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make this our forward. We're going to find that color sensor block. We're going to leave that at the less than 50. And then we'll go ahead and just turn this into our stop. And for those of you that have never known how to delete a block, there's how you do it. You just go up to that block and you go to the trash and it takes, takes care of it. Okay, so what's going to happen is this robot needs to be on something that's over 50% reflection. So my students would, you know, they would put it on their table and they'd be like, ah, Mr. you know, what's going on? It doesn't start. And they're just realizing that it's under the 50%, so it's already stopping. So you must put it on something bright like this white paper here. And then you send it. And it, when it, as soon as it sees that less than 50, it will stop. So, you know, we can prove that this table is under 50 because it stops when it hits that table. So I always will show my students this. Let me get out of the program. 
I will just make sure that they understand that right now on port view, this color sensor, which is on the white paper, there's why this robot's going forward. It sees over 50% reflection. So it's gonna keep going forward until it sees something less like black, which is 9%, and that's what's gonna cause it to stop. This table, 38%. So that's why it stopped when it hit the table. So as long as they understand that, they're good, and we can move on. This next one's pretty fun because it introduces the color um, sensor to the, you know, where I can actually pick up colors. So this one's having them start off with blue. And if it senses blue, it will go forward for one second. So let me just go ahead and put this on the brick. That blue one's right here. And if it sees the blue, we're gonna go forward for that one second. So, you know, hey. Okay, so we're looking for something blue like here. That makes it go. Let's come over here to my Dodger banner. And you put it close enough, whoops. Maybe that wasn't blue enough. Huh. We're looking for something blue here, my shark. Let me start this again. There we go. It was tripping out. Shark. Maybe this is too dark of a blue. Let's keep walking around this way. Oh, the paint on this side here. There we go. That picked it up as blue. So there you have the, I call this the Blue Go program. So it sees blue and has the robot go forward for one second. One last program, everybody. All right, once they get to this page, they know that they're at, they're at the end here. So this is the touch sensor. You were wondering, where did the touch sensor go? So if the touch sensor is pressed in, we're gonna hear a sound file, a uh, hello, and then a backwards for one second. So let's go ahead and put that on here. So we'll go ahead and change this to our touch sensor block. And I think I went too high. Okay, it must be the glare because I didn't even see it. Okay, so there's the touch sensor on the press in. We're now gonna, let me just change this. So we're gonna get the sound file for one, and then we're gonna get the backup. So we'll just change this to our backwards, and we'll leave it at the one second. So let me just put you next to the speaker. If I press this, so I'm guessing I'm gonna have to press this in. Okay, so ready? Woo! So you heard the hello, and I tried to keep this thing from running over here. All right. So there you have the touch sensor, the very last program of the booklet. Now, I told you we were gonna go over what happens when my students complete these checkpoints. So I have each team's name. When they complete that checkpoint, and you can see all the different page numbers here, they will get a star. So it basically just tells me, Travis and Noah completed the first four, and then they have three left to go. So it's just one of those things that helps me track their progress through the book. It lets me know who might be struggling so I can go and say, hey, what kind of, you know, what kind of help can I give you guys? And a lot of times it's just they're building slowly or just more slow than other groups. And that's fine. You just let them go at their own pace here, but you just want to make sure they are not lollygagging it and just taking a very long time. So that's uh, my system on going through the booklet so they can get those skills uh, to start off the school year now we can start to move on to other different things and now they can start to do certain board challenges and other th cool things like that our sumo competition so it's just one of those neat start off things just to get them to know how 
the robot works. And what's perfect now is this robot is ready for the space challenge, which would be our next activity. So it's all set up here because it has a lot of the sensors and this medium motor that they'll need to um, complete those missions. Okay guys, so there you have it. Those of you that don't have the booklet can now see, um, not only from yesterday, the link to the instructions, but now you guys have all the programs. So if you want to take your students through the booklet process, now you can see what you're looking for. And hopefully I've given you a good idea on how do you track you know, what your students have done through the chart. Um, so, you know, if you got any other questions, you can shoot it down to me in the comment section. Other than that, I hope you guys liked um, this beginning part of the year. That's kind of what I, I always do to kind of introduce the skills, um, you know, to start off the year for the students and then they can take off from there. And it's just wild and cool to watch. Okay, guys, I am Mr. Hino from Mission Zyga Robotics. I'm out.